the non-functioning business. And when I say that, I intend to expand, Your Honours, because if I'm to adopt the language used by Learned Senior, it suggests what exactly caused the destruction of the company, the appellant. It is our respectful submission. They were suspended, and as a consequence of that suspension, they could not operate. The appellants are asserting, they're, they're propounding the position that it was a consequence of the search conducted by servants of the state. We dispute that. We say when you look at the evidence, and I'll, I'll take the quotage shortly, it is clear what impacted the business was in effect the suspension um, of the company. Even taken at its highest, Your Honor, if the company had not been suspended, what really caused, and if I can use the term of His Honor, Mr. Justice Hayton, the cancer for the company is the unsealing of the indictment by the United States Eastern District Court. We say, at best, how could, and as we say rightly, Her Ladyship, Madam Justice Afiz, pointed to the fact, how could a learner trial judge extensively analyze this evidence as being tenuous at best, but yet comes to the conclusion that the total effect of the reduction for the calculation loss would have resulted in the sum of approximately U.S. $4,460,000. We say, with respect, that is a quantum leap that has not been substantiated by the learned trial judge. And we say the Court of Appeal was correct in rejecting the approach of the learned trial judge. And that is why I refer to the fact earlier, Your Honors, that what the learned trial judge did in this case, if we can put it in our local uh, colloquial parlance, it is really he went up into a judicial, uh, uh, a jurisprudential cul-de-sac that he could not come out of. Having rejected this evidence, saying it's unreliable, he gave no basis as to how he arrived at this amount that he awarded. Is there anything in the judgment of the learned judge that assists us with how he arrived at the 20%? Absolutely nothing. Mr. Hall, nothing, nothing in any of his findings okay, to, to give us a clue as to, to why he thought 20 was a reasonable start? I don't want to be, I don't want to be unduly unkind, but it looks, I stand to be corrected, it looks at the situation as though it was plucked out of uh, the judicial sky. Say, well, look, it's, I'll reduce it by 20, and this is what I'll give you. You would, ad you would ad admit that the search was overbroad, that it was excessive. We, 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 we accept the fact that the search might have been excessive, but we say it wasn't oppressive. We accept that fact. Okay, so then so what, does that mean? what would be the appropriate relief for that? As a starting point, we say, and it should stay at that starting point, a declaration. What about some vindicatory damages? Well, in relation to the vindicatory damages, we say in terms of the standard and the bar, they've not, they've not, they've not crossed that hurdle. And I say this with the greatest of respect, Your Honors. This is not a case, as, as I can recall growing up, uh, this is not a case, if I can use that parlance, where you had Constable Brown. Uh, I, I have a warrant to arrest you. What, what this case suggests is here are uh, law officers who acted on the basis of a request. That request would have been vetted by the competent authority. Here's a situation where the proper warrant would have been issued. My understanding of the lawyer trial judge's treatment of what happened is that perhaps the officers were a bit overzealous in their approach in the operation, but it wasn't oppressive.